So today, boys and girls, we're going to be talking about the Bighorn and a build that actually runs amazing with it. Now, if you guys have tried the Bighorn since title update 12, you might say they added more of a mag size, but it's still really hard to control, especially when you scope in. The recoil is just all over the place. But don't worry, in this build, I'll be showing you guys some ways you guys can minimize the recoil by still creating an amazing DPS build that is great for long and short range. And there's a big difference that you guys can do with some small tips to still be able to create a hard hitting DPS build without sacrificing any kind of damage and still being able to control this. So let's take a look at this. I just want to show you. So just look at the recoil right now, the big horn, right? You see how it's popping up, up, up. Now take a look at recoil right now. The big difference right there, right? A huge difference. Well, let's get into the build. So if we take a look at this build right here, you may notice that we are running 1.1 million armor, 320,000 health, and it's all built around the Bighorn. Now, why do you say I am using the Bighorn? Why do I say it's such a good build? Because of the talent Big Game Hunter. Now, if you look, the total damage on this is 105,000 damage, 800 RPM, but once we scope in, it changes. So look at what the Big Game Hunter does. When scoped in, it switches to semi-automatic fire mode, dealing a 450% weapon damage with each shot. Now, headshots grant 2% headshot damage, stacks up to 50 times. Now, once at full stacks, 10 stacks DK every 4 seconds until all stacks have been removed. Now, if you keep getting headshots, it will continue to keep the stack up. Now that is why this weapon is actually a beast and I think a lot of people really should give it a shot if you're looking for that short to medium and then even having that long range once you scope in. Now one thing about this is all the mods on this weapon are not specced into crit hit chance or crit hit damage. So all of your crit hit chance and crit hit damage must come from the build itself. So for you to hit high numbers, for you to be able to melt enemies, you guys are going to want to build that stack and then you're going to want to be able to have crit hit chance and crit hit damage on the build like you'll see in a few. So that is one tip I'll give you guys if you guys are looking at building crit hit chance, crit hit damage on this build, you might have to spec into crit hit chance more than you're used to. Now for the secondary, I love running Emily's Guard and that's for the fact that it has perfect preservation. Killing an enemy repairs 12% of your armor over five seconds. Now if you do get a headshot, this kill improves it by another 12%, so that could be 24% armor you're getting back, right, over five seconds, which is amazing, especially on a build that you're all damaged. Now, we do have the Sharpshooter Specialization, and we're mainly using it for this talent right here, Breath Control, Passive Talent, 15% increased weapon stability, reduced recoil, and faster reacquisition of targets. So that is one special um, passive talent that the Sharpshooter class has, and it's one that I really enjoy using. And that also works for all weapons. So that's why it's actually really good with a weapon like the Big Horn that tends to jump all over the place. For the sidearm, you can run whatever you want, but that is how this build is set up. So let's get into the build itself, right? So for the mask, we are running a Fenris mask. Remember, this gives us 10% assault rifle damage. The Big Horn, even though it has that scoped in power, is an assault rifle. It has weapon damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and then we do have a critical hit chance mod on here. So remember, like I said, you might have to spec into critical hit chance more than you would like to. More than likely, most of you guys never put critical hit chance mods on your builds anymore. Now we go to the chest piece. This is a Grupo Soma chest piece. This gives us 15% critical hit damage for the one piece. We have weapon damage, critical hit damage, and then I went with 8% weapon handling because you pair that up with the brace talent, which is when in cover, you get 45% weapon handling. So that is pretty amazing. You guys already saw what it did when I jumped into cover. It was almost like a laser beam. So you pair that up with the weapon handling on this piece right here. So that's 53% weapon handling. And then you pair that with the sharpshooter, um, the 15% really makes a difference and I think you guys will notice that it's it's absolutely a laser beam when in cover. So that's why this build still works good because most rifle builds, most DPS builds, you still get in cover every now and then. Now we are running a three piece Providence because I did want that 15% headshot damage. Now we have 10% critical hit chance and then 15% critical hit damage. We have an armor roll of 170,000, 12% critical hit damage and then 6% critical hit chance. Now, one thing I will tell you guys, if you guys feel like 1.1 million armor is 
not enough for you, well then swap out one of these weapon damage ones. You'll go up to 1.3 million armor, and then of course you'll have critical hit chance and critical hit damage still on the attribute rolls. So I'll let you guys play with that. I think 1.1 is pretty easy to run, especially since I'm used to running glass cannon when I run those rifle type builds. Then we have the contractor gloves. We have a roll of 170,000. We have 8% damage to armor and then 12% critical hit damage right here. So yes, this was a pretty good piece for me that I have it God rolled. But yeah, if you guys are looking for these gloves, well, this is the role you want for this build because, you know, you have that armor roll and that gives us that 1.1 million armor. Now for the backpack, I went with the name backpack, the gift. This is the Providence piece. And the reason I went with this is because we are going with weapon damage, crit damage, crit chance, and then we have a crit damage mod, but it has perfect vigilance versus just regular vigilance. It gives you that 25% weapon damage. But then if you do get hit, right, it disables the buff. But in three seconds, it comes back. So even though one second doesn't seem like a lot, I feel like Perfect Vigilance in PvE makes a huge difference. So yeah, I do like Perfect Vigilance. If you guys have the gift and you're looking for a bag like this to stack some headshot damage and you're going to run a three-piece Providence, well, the gift is the bag you guys want to try to farm for. Now, I believe this one is a DZ exclusive, but a lot of times you can buy it at the vendor. I think last week they had it at the vendor. So hopefully if you guys have been watching any type of vendor videos or you guys just check the vendors yourself, well, you would have seen it. Now, I do run it with the decoy and the decoy is just to allow me to um, move around, be able to land those shots, and then I run it with the Reviver Hive. Of course, since if I'm solo, the Reviver Hive will save me. If I'm in a group, no need for the Reviver Hive. Run a turret, run whatever you guys want. It doesn't really matter at that point. But one thing you guys will need 100% is um, that decoy it makes a big difference. So let's check out the stats. So we get into the stats, you'll see I have 49.9% critical hit chance, almost 50%. 178% critical hit damage. Now, if you guys want to change this, if you guys want to change this, um, you guys can drop down the critical hit damage and then put the critical hit chance. And for some odd reason, my headshot damage is showing negative. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, just know it's a lot of headshot damage, especially once you guys are scoped in and you guys build those stacks. Really makes a difference. When I tell you guys, you guys can fight with this build from distance, from long range, um, and not having to worry about having glass cannon really makes a difference. And the brace, right? Because if I'm in cover, like you are a lot of times when you fight with these um, semi-automatic weapons, it makes a difference. Now, the great thing about this is if I do scope in, right? Like if I don't scope in, sorry, I can still use it as an automatic rifle and it does, it really performs. So that's what's really good about the build. The fact that you have that medium to short range with the automatic rifle. And then you also have that long distance, which you just saw. So if you want to use this as a close range weapon, you can. And what I really love about that is for building the stacks, when you want to get that 50 stack, you can do that without having to zoom in. So I can build those stacks while the enemy is right next to me. And that really makes a difference. That helps with building those stacks and really allowing you to take full advantage of the build. So let me know what you guys think. Um, try out the build, test it out, tweak it, make it your own way, and then let me know what you guys think about it. I was really worried about this because I've tried using other talents on the chess piece, and I felt like Brace was the one talent that I was able to put on this that really made a difference. And once I figured, you know what, with this DPS build, I tend to be in cover a lot anyway, it really made a difference. So. This is it. This is the build right here, guys. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions at all, use the comment section down below. But I will see you guys in the next Division 2 video. But until then, nothing but skills is out.